Oh yes, I was very aware of that. Thank you though for advising me of it. it hmm? Oh, oh hello. I'm, I see. I am very glad that you're here. Hey, welcome to your bedroom. It is very nice to see you. We are very happy that you're finally home. <laughs> well, I hope you don't mind. I lit some candles around the room. Of course, they are candles that I made myself. That's 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 exactly right. We wouldn't have it any other way. <laughs> I'm sure you're the same. <laughs> so where are the candles that you made? Because I looked everywhere in the house and I couldn't find any. I even went through your underwear drawer. We won't discuss what I found in there. We'll save that for another day. That's and telling her that's why yeah that has nothing to do with why we're here <laughs> exactly hmm? I'm, what, I'm, excuse me what am i doing here um i think starting with a thank you would be better than suddenly shrieking at me i mean that's not very neighborly it's not it's exactly right it's very inconsiderate hmm. well you almost make it sound like I don't care. You make you make me sound like a bad person. Oh, oh, absolutely, absolutely. I will give you your space. I don't mean to crowd. Good. This ex excuse me, is it my cat? Is is this my cat? That is some very inaccurate um perception you have there. That is toxic thinking. Stinking thinking, that's right. You have stinking thinking, and that's one of the reasons why we're here today. We're going to help you with your stinking thinking, <laughs> the two of us together. I do not own a cat, okay? One does not simply own a cat. No. Sloane and I share a space together. Yes, I'm telling her, I'm telling you, so, you're so eager. <laughs> You remind me so much of my Ngi. Ngi. So eager to share information. Ngi. No. Not with the back of the throat. Ngi. You remember when I waited for you in your car? We went over this last week. Ngi. Come by the house on Tuesday at 3. I have a class. Yes. All right, all right. Sloane's earthbound name is better than you. So you can you can refer to Sloane as better than you. He's better than you. <laughs> Let's give you your space. I give you your space, of course. Now, I noticed when I was waiting for you in your car that you had some um what the mass producers call cat food in there. I wasn't aware that you had um recently come to co cohabit with a cat? Has that happened? Did you did you begin a cohabitation with the cat? Because I was not informed and honestly it hurts my feelings a little bit that you would not share this with me. We are neighbors. I guess that depends on how you define neighbors. So what if we're 10 houses apart? We're still neighbors. We still love one another, don't we? No, oh, I was under the impression that, that we had a lovely neighborly relationship. Well, if you must know. See, honestly, I think you're already trying to deflect. I sense some apprehension in you. You seem a little tense. You look really agitated, but it's probably all the preservatives and literally everything you consume. They've started to draw you up like an old rubber band. The problem with old rubber bands is that when they are stretched, they break. And all of the chemicals in your body are going to make you brittle. And it's very sad. You're already, you're already trying to change the subject. Why are you here? Why are you in my home? I'm calling the police. Come on now. We don't need to do this, you know. We can't use our fear as an excuse to be mean to people. We need to not do that. We have to remember, not everyone is the bad guy. 
just mass marketed uh, food products and retailers and most mommies um, okay what you're not going to let me finish until I answer the question are you you're not going to let me go on with what I have to actually talk to you about today until I answer that is that right okay fine well it seems that one of your uh, windows in the dining room was a little open. So I didn't even really do anything technically. All I did was, you know, stretch the window a little bit and help myself in. That's all I did. It's, there's nothing illegal about that. I didn't break anything. And I don't even really consider it into entering because are we ever really in a space you know, are we, are we confined by our bodies? Are you defined by your body? I wouldn't want to be defined by that body. No offense. I only mean to help. You know, if you would just let me go through your groceries, we wouldn't have these problems like I wanted to do last week. Why do you think I waited in your car in that parking lot for 45 minutes? Well, again, with that kind of, you know, I was going to say I could wait till another day, but it actually kind of ties into why I'm here. Um, so I noticed in your car the uh, cat food, which, you know, I, don't, I, did, I did dispose of it. Yes, I did. Well, there was a storm drain right outside of your car, so I just dropped it in there. You're, you're welcome, by the you, you look if you are cohabitating with the cat you cannot feed it those little pellets that's that's toxic do you know what happens if you feed a cat that stuff they get cancer they're gonna die do you want this cat do you not like this cat well, um how does the cat refer to itself um what what uh what name has it given itself what do, you, what do you what do you mean? What do you mean? Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. You did what? You named the cat. Oh. Did you hear that? I know. That's classic. Classic. I I did. It really is sad. It really is sad that that. I know that she thinks she has the right to just, you can just, what are you like, the, the queen? You can just dub people, you know, here's your name, here's your name. <laughs> Better than you think, so that's ridiculous. <laughs> so, okay, uh, this is too good, this is too good. So I'm going to ask her, what did you name the cat? <laughs> Dexter? <laughs> I wonder how Dexter feels about that. Yeah, no, that's not going to work. You, look. It's really sweet of you, I guess. Your heart is probably in the right place. I am sure you're doing your best. But one doesn't simply, you know, give a cat a name. Oh my goodness. Did you, did you at least tell me that you sat down and communicated with the cat before you did this? Did you have a conversation? Did you come to an agreement about anything? You didn't. I know. I'm, I'm appalled. I didn't bring my soap. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Sloane. Oh, he really is better than you. That's his earthbound name, by the way. I don't mean he's literally better than you, but he is. You are such a help in these hard times. This is difficult. Okay. I'm going to need to have a conversation with the cat with which you cohabitate. Have you at least confirmed with the cat that it's okay that you continue living here? Oh my goodness. I know, I know. Look, why don't you go look for the other cat, okay? Maybe you can communicate. Maybe. Maybe you can help. Go find the other cat. Exactly. Go find the other cat. Find out the name. Find out the cat's name, okay? That's wonderful. Thank you for your help. Go. Be free. It's okay. 
better than you is going to find the other cat and we're going to start working some things out here um so you don't know the cat's name you don't know if it's okay for you to continue living here um is there anything that you do know about this cat it's a risk what do you mean a rescue rescue how how did you how did you you really think a lot of yourself so you rescued the cat did you ask the cat if it wanted to be rescued you just snatched it away from where someone abandoned it okay and uh, so what exactly have you done to make life better for this uh, Dexter of yours you brought it here okay you're not a superhero that's nothing to brag about what else did you do took the cat to the vet oh well there mm. okay there's your first mistake right there uh, what exactly do you think the vet can do for this cat I'm very curious to hear this yes okay expel the thoughts expel that I'm I am gracing you with this no, hold still. It's a variegated badum badum. Hold still. The healing powers of the variegated badum badum are going to cleanse you of these terrible, incorrect notions of cohabitating with a cat. I can't wait to tell Haven about this. It's it's really quite humorous. Okay. Haven is my daughter. She is 104 months old and very, very gifted. She is so incredibly smart. She skipped 14 grades and didn't even go to school. I unschooled her. She's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. I don't know what I did to end up with such a gifted daughter. You are full of toxicity. If you would just not move, that would help. You keep flinching. The variegated badum badum is doing its work. So tell me, what kind of snake oil did the vet sell you? Mm, I bet it was expensive. You probably parted with lots of money. They didn't give you anything? Well, good for you for refusing it. I'm telling you, there's nothing good about anything they have there natural homeopathic things that's what you need and those are things you can craft with your own two hands we don't need we don't need big pharma to kill the creatures in our lives we don't need big pharma to kill us either as long as we have these we have everything we need and our intuition of course that's all we need right up here and here and of course here our heart as long as you have those things, what more do you need? And you're very lucky that I got here when I did. I brought all of my healing instruments with me. We have many things here that I've crafted myself. We are going to cleanse your home of all of the wrong that you have brought into it. You have dumped so much bad intention into this place. I can sense it. I can smell it. <clears throat> you smell it? It almost smells like bread. Have you been baking bread? No. Well, that's what it is. Incorrect thoughts. Oh, better than you. Come, come, come here. Come here. Did you find the other cat? Uh huh. He told. He he told you to do something physically impossible with your. With your hugs and happiness? He called you a what? A hippie freak? Well, your cat has an attitude problem. You're right. Not your cat. The cat that cohabitates with you. Well, this cat sounds like a real piece of work. Good thing we got here when we did. Yeah. Okay. See, here's the thing. Do you see this wonderful relationship that better than you and I have? Everyone can have this with any cat. You just have to, you have to have the right frame of mind. And when we don't have the right frame of mind, 
our cats that share our home with us pick up on that. And there's the problem. See, you have, you are stressed, you are tense. And of course, this cat is picking up on that. And you are making the cat very uncomfortable in its own home, especially if you didn't even bother to ask if you can continue existing in this space. That was very haughty of you. That was very high-handed of you. I know, we did have that discussion. That's right. Better than you allowed me to stay in the home, and I am very grateful for that. We, um, we have a very special bond. <laughs> it's, it's, it's truly amazing how, how close we are. We always get along. We never have any problems at all. <laughs> it's just perfect. <clears throat> So clearly, if you are having difficulties with that Dexter, it's because of you. I don't mean to be blunt. Don't want to put too fine a point on it, but it's your fault that things are not going well. <laughs> I'm sure this comes as a shock to you. Um, you've been, what? Ja Jackson Galaxy, you said? <laughs> she said <laughs> Jackson Galaxy. Well, you can tell by looking at him right off the bat that things are not quite right with him. You listen to him. How, how did you listen to him? How did you do that? Did you go meet with him? Did you have a conversation face to face? Oh, you watched YouTube videos. Wow, you've invested lots of time and trouble. You sat down and watched a video. You just plopped down on your butt and watched a video. Boy, you've been working hard. I can tell. This cat is very lucky to live here. So, okay, clearly Jackson Galaxy doesn't know what he's doing. You can tell. He wears glasses. I mean, everybody knows that people who wear glasses, do you know what that means? Okay, let me back up. Because I keep forgetting that you don't know most things. The human body is remarkable. Like the body of any animal. It's remarkable. It can heal itself. You know, you get a cut, the body heals itself. It's, it's unbelievable what it does. There's no reason to have bad eyesight. If, if, um, if, if one has bad eyesight, it is actually the body's way of communicating to you that there's something that you don't want to see. You are, in effect, shutting something out. You are turning a blind eye to it. Jackson Galaxy wears glasses, therefore he is defective. There's something he doesn't want to see, so his body won't allow him to, and it allows his eyesight to be poor. So I don't think I would want someone who is clearly ignoring something important in his life to give me advice on anything. So you wasted your time, and you know, all the time you spend, did you watch it on a cellular phone? You did. A sm smartphone. You know, there are waves that come off those things that are going to give you brain cancer. So not only are you going to die, you wasted your time watching videos from a, a defective person giving you advice that is counterproductive to literally everything you should actually be doing for the cat with which you cohabitate. Congratulations. It's beautiful. So uh, how long has this cat been here? Seven weeks. My goodness. And in all that time, you couldn't come to me? You couldn't uh, communicate to me that you were sharing your home with this cat? I find that awfully hard to believe that you've been that busy. <laughs> what, what have you been busy doing exactly? Oh. <laughs> working that is so precious you know I am a stay-at-home mom and uh, I don't know what you're doing but I craft everything we consume with my own hands there's there's no work harder than that but I still find time to spend with those who matter to me <clears throat> so um, how much time do you spend working every day eight hours a day. Well, it seems to me that you still have a lot of hours left over. You could have just walked ten houses down and come to tell me, Harvest, 
I'm cohabitating with the cat. Please help me because I'm dumb and I don't know how to do anything. You didn't do that. You should have. So what if you tried? Okay, so you, the, so the cat attacks you. It attacks you randomly. Are, do any other cats live here? What do you mean you have two other cats? Were you aware of this? Why did you just assume I knew that? How, would I, how was I supposed to know? How long have these other two cats lived here? Okay, I'm becoming angry. I need to sniff you. This is oddly soothing. Have you gotten into the catnip again? I find that the catnip I grow is really special. The leaves are funny looking, but I find it very relaxing. When it's dried, especially. It makes funny seed pods. <clears throat> I'm okay. <clears throat> so, you're telling me that you have cohabitated with two other cats for three years? And you never mentioned this to me? So what? That doesn't matter. I am really offended right now. I, and I'm almost to the point where I don't even want to help you anymore. I don't want to... You're right. I'm not helping. I'm not helping her. You're right. No, I mean, I, I am. But really, the main reason I'm here is that poor cat that you have abducted from his state of abandonment and just stuck here in your house without even getting consent for it. And then you drag the cat off to the vet. Oh my gosh. Dr. Doom is what it really is. I would never, I would never take better than you to the vet. No, I would never do that. Because I care for the cats that cohabitate with me. I would never take them there. You know, all they do is inject them with poisons. Make them sick. Why would you do that to a helpless animal? I bet you put him in one of those cat prisons too, don't you? You can find the cat. You're a heartless monster. You're heartless. Did you put it in a crate? You are a heartless monster. You really are. So, um, so what else did this bespectacled fraud tell you to do? Mm hmm Did you try that? And how did that work for you? It didn't work? That's what I thought. <laughs> so tell me, are you a Capricorn? Uh, Sagittarius. Pisces? Libra? What, 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 what's, your, what's your sign? And I don't mean what they call, what most people call. No, I mean most people who do the astrological signs could follow that incorrect chart. I mean the real chart. What, what, what is your sign? I bet you are a cancer, which would make sense. Am I right? No, when's your birthday? You're not a cancer. Just what I thought. Exactly. That explains it. That explains it. So what sign was the cat born under? You don't know? Well, with your sign, it makes perfect sense that you're not jiving with this cat at all. It makes perfect sense. You're born under the wrong sign. And so people like you are never going to get along with cats. See, if you had studied ahead of time, you would have known that taking this cat away from its abandonment was a big mistake. You know, we can't just go out into the world willy-nilly and just snatch up animals. I mean, my goodness, we're not aliens, as far as we know. Well, I guess now it's too late. It's too late, you've already done it. The cat's here. Okay, can you go try one more time? How about you go talk to the other two cats? Go see if you can find him and see what you can find out. Okay? Don't let me down. Huh? I know. Go ahead. We're going to have to just go on with the way things are. We're going to have to try to make the best of a terrible situation that you created. Um, 
Okay, so we have established the problem is you. And you know, we we can't we can't allow our laziness to ruin the lives of other creatures. Thank God you never had children. I mean, I just I can't imagine what a terrible job you would have done. I mean, look what you've done already to this poor cat. Imagine what would have happened to a, a child in your care. Ugh. It's, it's bringing bad waves over here. All right. I want to talk to you about this, and I don't even want to touch it, but for the sake of this cat, I'm going to. I found these things plugged up all over your house. I found five of these things in outlets all over the house. You want to explain this to me? What is this? It's a calming diffuser. <laughs> what exactly is this supposed to do? It has pheromones in it. Mm, no, that's not pheromones. You, you, I, who sold this to you? So, mm. you know, I can, I can smell. Ooh, I can smell the toxicity in there. That's cancer. It's a cancer diffuser. Just, you can make your own diffusers. You can make your own calming liquids. See, when I craft my black strap molasses, um, and I grow my spelt, you bring them together. You, of course, you know, you, which shaman led you down the right path to craft your uh, black strap molasses? I, I, what, do you, what do you mean? This is very important. If you're talking about diffusers, we were just talking about diffusers. Will you please pay attention? So you don't know your shaman's name? Did you just forget? See, all those preservatives have clogged up your brain to the point that you can't even remember your shaman's name. <sighs> I'm almost embarrassed to say that we're neighbors. Well, my shaman's name is Sparrow, and Sparrow helped me learn to craft my black strap molasses years ago. I am very good at crafting molasses. I'm an artisan, practically. Hmm. Very talented. I craft my molasses, and I mix them. I take a mortar and pestle, Put them in there with the spelt, grind it up, make a paste, and then that you put on a sheet of metal that you have created yourself. Of course, I can mine my own materials and make my own sheets of metal. Place it over the fire, and it diffuses the scent of relaxation all over the forest. That's why all the animals love me, the raccoons the possums, the deer. I don't know how I do it some days. It's truly harmonious over there on my, in my section of the street. You should come pay a visit sometime. It's bliss. I was walking through the, uh, the fig orchard the other day and admiring the birds and hawk flew down and said hello harvest and i said hello and it really just made my day because it's nice to be it's nice to be acknowledged by nature and to know that the world appreciates you for the truly blessed person that you are i am blessed and i bless the world every day i wake up <sighs> so anyway when uh when you, when you craft your black strap molasses and you grow your spelt, did it not ever occur to you that you could put them together in a mortar and pestle and make your own diffuser? Did it not occur to you that you could do that instead of going out and getting these things? You really thought that was going to help the situation? Again, it all comes back to you. You were the problem here. Um, and now you have ruined the lives of three cats that cohabitate with you in this home that you don't even know if you're allowed to be in. You come in here with your negative energy. You come in here with your stress. The cats pick up on that. So all you need to do is just stop feeling the way you feel. It's very easy to turn off your feelings with a little practice, you know. 
Fisher became heavily involved in CrossFit right after Christmas. Uh, no, no, no. What's that? No, this is not a, a place. No. He, he created a large wooden cross and is carrying it across the state. CrossFit. And he's becoming very strong. And in his travels, he's met several people. He met Kelly with an I. And they became very close. And they've been having Bible studies at her house. And I'm not allowed to communicate with him while he's there. And I started to have a feeling about it, but I just turn them off. I just turn those feelings off. And, you know, you just, you just have to just not feel that. You just compartmentalize. It's good if you just take your feelings and put them in a box and just forget about it. And it goes away. It just goes away. <laughs> they go away. They go away. You ignore the feelings, they go away. But since you aren't willing to do that, you come home all wrapped up in stress, bad feelings, the cats pick up on that. You have essentially just ruined any chance this cat had of being happy here. So I hope you're proud of yourself that you, you have caused this to happen. So you have your stress. Your astrological sign is completely wrong for this situation. You didn't even talk to the cat ahead of time to even bother to find out the cat's name. And then you brought, you brought it here against its wishes. I mean, what? it's almost like you don't want this to work. It's almost like you're trying to fail. Now, do you go through life trying to fail or is it just this one thing? Because I'll be honest, looking at you and looking at this house, I don't think this is an isolated incident. It's an observation. So. Oh, better than you. Come, come. You have word. You, you look excited. Tell me. Okay. The other two cats hate you. Uh-huh. They hope you die. They say anything else? Oh, that's okay. Well, your other two cats now hate you and hope you die. And they don't know the other cat's name, but he's an asshole. Okay. Oh, well, that's, that they are very blunt. I must say the, the two original cats that cohabitate with you, they are very blunt. They clearly have a lot to say and you are not listening to them. You are not effectively communicating with them and now they hate you and they want you to die. So I think we can try a few things here, but ultimately I think the best thing you can do is just move out. And just leave it for them, you know. I think you at least owe them the house. You know, they deserve to live here. No, I, I, I think it's asking too much for us to move in. <laughs> I know we could fix the situation. Of course we could. Because we get along perfectly. So if you and this cat don't get along, clearly you're the problem. <laughs> because otherwise you would get along just as well as better than you and I do. <laughs> We have a perfect relationship. Yes, we do. It's wonderful. Mm. You could have had the same thing if you were just a better person. Okay. All right. You go explore. Okay. Don't eat anything and don't touch anything. Okay. You'll get cancer and die. Okay. Well, I need to get on with the work here. All right. I'm keeping this nearby because you are toxic. Now, I think at this point it would be inappropriate for you to get too personal with this cat that we don't even know its name. I don't even want to refer to it as Dexter because it's almost vulgar that you call it that. You just give it a name. Like I could just name you something. You know, I can name you Beulah. What are you going to do about it? And then you have to answer every time I call you that or I'll get upset. And then it'll be your problem. I mean, this cat, you got to look at it from the cat's point of view. You're, you're, you're so self-centered and you act like you've done so much for this cat. You haven't even done anything. What, 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 you haven't even done anything for this cat. 
and you don't have an excuse because all you do is work. So you have plenty of time when you're at home. You should be dedicating all of your time to the cat and you're obviously not. So I don't even know why you're frustrated right now with me being here, you know, so just try to focus. I found this in, in the bathroom in there. It kind of looks like the thing I found in your underwear drawer that we'll talk about later. Have you been using this around the house? Okay, this I'm assuming has a scent. I am not smelling it. It's called Nice Lady. Um, well, you would be, I, I wouldn't say you're nice. I'd say you're well-intentioned. I think you mean well, but you should have known. I mean, everybody knows when you bring a new cat into your home to cohabitate with you, you should not be wearing perfume, okay? And you should not, you shouldn't be wearing deodorant at all. You should have switched to non unscented deodorant. You should not be wearing perfume. You shouldn't even be using scented laundry detergent because I know you use a washing machine. I can just tell. I hand wash everything, of course, with soap I make myself <laughs> because that's, that's the right way to do it. That's the way we do it. But I know you don't because you're so busy. You can't possibly go down to the creek with a washboard and handmade soap. I mean, that would just be too much trouble. I can't be bothered to do it the right way. No, I have to do it the sloppy, toxic, easy way. Anything you have to buy a machine to do just indicates how lazy you are. <laughs> I'm sorry to be so blunt, but you need somebody to be blunt with you. So you need to get rid of everything scented. You should not be using scented soap, scented detergent, scented anything, perfume, deodorant, anything, scented lotion. Oh my goodness. So many things. I mean, you shouldn't be using them anyway because they're terrible for you. They're terrible for the environment. They're terrible for everyone. It's so gross just to sit here. So throw all that out, which you should have done before you brought a cat here. It's awful. Your other two cats have had to live with those scents for all this time. No wonder they want you dead. It's just, again, it just indicates how selfish and self-centered you are. How do you live with yourself? It's just me, me, me. It's all about me. I don't care about these animals. I just act like I do. So people think I'm wonderful. You're not wonderful. You're lazy and self-centered. I'm glad I'm not that way. I would never be like that because I am so much better than you. <laughs> so with that said, we need to, we need to minimize the amount of contact that you're making with this cat. I bet Jackson Galaxy didn't tell you that. No, of course he didn't because he can't even see. So I have crafted this for you. This is made from repurposed pine needles and broom straw. I knitted it myself. Now this is a loving touch, okay? This loving touch is perfect because the fingers bend like this and you can extend it. You can hold it way out here and go up to the kitty and pet the kitty and love the kitty. And when the kitty is more comfortable with you, it will communicate that to you. And you need to start listening to the cat. Find out what the cat really wants. But you need to be prepared because I think once you start to find out what the cat really wants, you're going to find out what the cat really wants is not you. It wants to get away from here because you are so inadequate and you are so not good at this. Um, well, I'm sorry, but you know, if, if you were even halfway decent at caring for the cats that live in your home, you wouldn't be having problems with this cat. You wouldn't be having problems with him attacking the other cats or you or other people. It wouldn't be an issue. So, I mean, I don't know what else to tell you other than it's, it's, um, it's all you. It's you. 
So I'm going to leave the loving hand here with you. You just keep this because it will become contaminated the longer it stays here in this home and I don't want it back. So you can do the loving touch with the cat and begin your communications that way. Start out by speaking to the cat and say hello. I'm sorry I've ruined your life by taking you away from an abandonment situation and bringing you into my home. I am so sorry that I didn't ask how you felt about that. I really apologize and you have to mean it. Because again, they're going to pick up on your intentions and how you really feel. If you're not feeling it, don't say it. Because the cat is going to know. Okay? So here's your loving touch hand. You keep that. Okay, that's for you. And here's what I'm going to do. I have these beads. These are from a poplar tree that I cut myself. I grew it and cut it myself. These are calming beads. The sound of these beads will help to relax the cat and help him forget what a terrible person you are. Maybe while the cat listens to the beads, you could be nearby and the cat can gaze upon your imperfect face and begin to associate you with a calming sound. begin to associate you with a decent pet, cohabitator, maybe. It's worth a shot. We're going to try that for an hour or two. And then if that doesn't work, what do you mean you're busy? It's so interesting to me how you say you're so concerned about the cat being happy here, yet you're not willing to invest a few hours in my calming beads and my loving hand. It's, it's funny how you say you care so much, yet you're so busy at the same time. See, I think now that someone has actually confronted you and started to expect you to do a little bit of work to make the cat comfortable, it's, uh, it's making you even more defensive than you normally are. Like every time you find me in your car or digging through your trash or sitting in your bedroom, it's like it's, you're even worse now. Because someone has finally come to you and said, hey, you are not very good at making cats comfortable in your home. That's painfully obvious. So I am more than happy to take on the job of doing that because someone needs to. Obviously, no one else has. So we have our calming hand, our loving hand, our calming beads. We're not stopping there. No, no. We're going to spend at least, you know, because of your attitude, I'm going to say we're going to spend at least three hours with the calming beads and the loving hand. And no matter where the cat goes in the home, we're going to follow and we're going to keep playing with the beads and you're going to stroke the cat with the loving hand and we're going to let the cat communicate with us on the cat's own time. Even if it takes all night, I don't care. We're going to do it. And then after a few hours of that, we have the next step. The soothing coins. Now everyone knows how much cats love the soothing coins. I made this myself. Oh yes, I did. This is made from woven seashell strands. I have a spinning wheel and I can make my own thread from repurposed seashells. You don't know how to do that? <laughs> I'm not surprised. That's okay. I've come to expect less from you after today. I will know from now on that I need to lower my expectations. That's all right. 
I have to do that with most people. <laughs> you know, the more people I meet, the more special I realize I am. So at least I have that. So, I'm thinking we're going to go on into the night with the calming beads. Definitely. We are going to see if we can help the cat have a decent night's sleep the first time in seven weeks. Because I know living here it hasn't had any peace. Because you don't care. You don't really care about this cat. You don't care about this cat's well-being. Obviously, if you cared, things would be going better right now. The reason you have so much disharmony in your home is because of your spirit. It's your spirit. It's unsettled. It's not at peace. And that is emanating through every square inch of this home. And it's affecting all the creatures in it. I bet if we were to speak to the spiders that live in the corners around here, they would probably confer. They would, they would, uh, they would confirm exactly what I'm saying. Yeah, she's really stressful and it's really affecting my health. Yeah, they would benefit from some calming coins, soothing coins and beads. So we're going to follow the cat around for several hours and relax the cat. And you will continue your communication and your apologies to the cat for being such a terrible person. And not only that, you're going to actually change your ways. You're going to wake up in the morning after 30 minutes of sleep feeling refreshed and truly penitent, truly sorry for being such a horrible person these last seven weeks, but actually probably for your entire life. And then I'll come back in the morning with the soothing sounds of the perfection necklace. Of course, I made this myself. I have um, my own smelter. I'm sure you have one too. <laughs> you don't. My expectations like a waterfall <laughs> for you. They started up here and they just do. <laughs> We're going to be down in the gully before long. We're going to keep the cat nice and relaxed. And then we are just going to put all of the cats together and then it will all be perfect. It will be wonderful. See, all you have to do with cats. You just have to love them. You just have to love them and talk to them and it always works out. <laughs> I know. It's, it's, it's amazing how effective it is if you just care a little bit about the cats. You know, we can't go through life just caring about ourselves. We have to invest time and energy in others. And this could be a good place for you to start. And then maybe you can start to care about people in your life and, you know, things going on around you because, well, you know, if you have a cat in your home and it's not working out, then the rest of your life is probably just as terrible. So we're going to work with you and help you learn to care about others and then feel the love and then everything is going to be absolutely perfect. And the last seven weeks of pure hell that you've put these cats through, hopefully after that, they can start to forgive you for it. But that remains to be seen. So I think we need to go ahead and get started. Um, yeah, so we're going to gather up everything. I have my woo-woo spoon. We can walk around and shake the woo-woo spoon. We're going to get the bad mojo out of here and then we're going to go from there. That's right. And then you can have a perfect relationship with all of the cats with which you cohabitate. <sighs> yeah, it's going to be wonderful. I can't wait to get started. And then as we do it, I can explain to you all of the things that are wrong with you. 
It's going to be wonderful. <laughs> well, thank you so much for allowing me to come into your home and help you today. Now, let's spend the next eight hours or so fixing everything you've messed up. Okay, great. Let's get started.